Good morning, friends. Welcome to Living Room Revival. I have a very special guest with us today. He's a close friend of mine since high school, and he has an amazing story to tell, an amazing testimony, an amazing relationship with God. And I have been so blessed and am so honored that I have been able to be a part of his walk with God um, that started you know, uh, in his own time on his own journey. Um, and we had a period of time where we, we've always been close, but we came back together at such a good time when we found God in our own places, separately apart from each other. Cause when we knew each other years ago, back in high school, we were, um, <laughs> we were not definitely not living the kind of life that we should have. Um, we found Christ uh, a little bit later in life, I guess. <laughs> so I Amen. really wanted to have him on here today to give you guys some encouragement, some inspiration, um, and just reveal God's heart to everybody because his story is powerful. It's beautiful. And I'm so, 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 so excited to share it with you guys today. So welcome, Terrell. Thank you. No problem. It's, it, it's a blessing to be here. Uh, thank you for having me. Yes. So, yeah. So we're, we're kind of just playing this by ear. Um, when I have people on here, I have no desire to have a script or interview questions or anything like this. I want it to be real, authentic. Um, I, we know what we're doing. You know, we prayed before this meeting and um, we just really want God to speak through us and for you just to share your authentic um, testimony with God, whatever you feel on your heart, you want to uh, speak to us. And um, yeah, I would just love to hear your story. Start wherever you want and uh, just go for it. Okay. Yes. As uh, Sister Anya said, we're just going it by ear. So we, we don't know what we're going to be saying, but I'd like to give a little um, um, background of uh, as to where I'm at right now. So my name is Terrell Malcolm. Um, I, um, I, I, I play drums in worship. Um, I'm, I play drums and, um, I, as well as I evangelize on the streets. Um, and I also have a bachelor in music. So I use the, uh, I used uh, my music gifts to, to glorify God, but it wasn't always like that. So I'd like to, um, I'd like to give you a testimony of, of, of where I was. Um, but before I, uh, give you my testimony, I'd like to read a little, uh, uh little bit of scripture and I'll break it down as I uh, talk about my, uh, my testimony. So in Mark, um, Mark four, uh, verse 30, the pair, this is, this is the parable of the mustard seed. Then Jesus said to what shall we like in the kingdom of God or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground is smaller than all the seeds on the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes a, uh, becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its, its shade. So me and Anya go back um, a, light, a little bit over 16 years, maybe a little bit more. Um, I, had to, I had to have to really calculate that. But we, we met in high school. Um, as Anya said, we were, you know, we were, we were teenagers and, you know, teenagers uh, try to, re we rebel. So, um, yeah, we met early and we became good friends. Uh, we had a good relationship, um, uh, went to Canada's wonderland a couple of times and there's, there's, uh, there's other things that we, we, we went to some parties, you know, we, we, were, we were in that lifestyle. Um, we didn't, we didn't really know the Lord. I didn't really know the Lord, but like, um, there was always, always, always something there. Like, you know, there was always curious, like I was going to church, but I was going there just to, you know, uh, I'm playing drums, check me out, you know, check out these chops. You know, I was that guy. I was going to church for attention and I wasn't really seeking the Lord. But um, I always had people in my life that were, that were whether that be, um, um, you know, close friends of mine, because I had, I had friends who were going to church and they would always just, you know, see how we're doing and they would plant seeds. And I didn't know that they were planting seeds. They were planting seeds, you know. And um, as, as, as I was um, uh, getting older, I started partying more and um, uh, just, just doing all these kinds of stuff. I was smoking a lot of weed. 
um, watching a lot of pornography, just all this stuff. And it was just really, it wasn't good for me. I was hanging out with the wrong people. Um, I was in a metal band um, playing demonic music and it was just, it wasn't a good time. We, we would go to parties and we'd mash up places and it was, it was a very, wasn't my best time. Um, and like I said, I'd go to parties and even Anya was there with me. And these were just times where we were just, we didn't know any better. But um, as we got older, like there was a good time, where there was a good point where I didn't see Anya for a while. I think it was after high school, after high school had finished, uh, we didn't, we maybe didn't speak for about a year. Mm-hmm. And then I remember, <clears throat> um, you know, she, she gave me a call mm-hmm. and she invited me to her place. Um, so I went to her place. I think Adam was there too, but they, they weren't married just yet. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the th- first thing I noticed as when I went to her house, Anya was different. It was, it was, it was a, di- it was like, I was talking to a different person and she was, she, she, she sat me down and she, she, she offered me coffee and she started talking about God. Now me knowing that there was always a darkness and there was always something missing, but uh, I was suppressing it. So when she started talking about God, it was a little weird to me. I'm like, is this, this the same Anya that I used to, you know, go to parties with? She, she's so different. But the more she talked to me, the more it was, it was, the more my heart was pierced, right? And um, so she's t- she was talking to me I'm, and I'm like, you know what? Maybe, she, maybe she's onto something. Maybe, she, maybe she's talking facts. Maybe, she, maybe, maybe what she says is true. So that same day, um, I drove home in my car and uh, many people know this story. I drove home in my car, my blue matrix, and I hit a red light. I hit a red light. So I'm like, you know what? God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me right now. And right then, I kid you not, I was slapped by the Holy Spirit. Like the Holy Spirit just came to me. And that same day I got home, I was, I was shaking. And I got home and I called Anya. And I'm like, Anya, I think, remember that? I, I think, I, I, and I called Anya. I'm like, Anya, I think I just got saved. Like I, it was, it was the best experience I ever experienced because it was like, it's like a light bulb just goes off, goes on. And it's the the best experience. Now, all that to say, you know, it, it wasn't, it, you know, cause I was saved. Doesn't mean everything was perfect after that. You know, um, I, I, I knew I, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but I still kind of rebelled. I was still doing things. I was still going to the parties after um, and one, one night, and Anya doesn't know this, I, God put me in shack. Um, one, one night I was, uh, I was drinking and I was smoking. Now, usually when I was in my, when I was in my teens, I can drink like 12 beers and smoke a ton of weed. This time I drank one beer and a little bit of weed. And right when, when that happened, um, I, I believe it with my heart that God came, he, he, he came upon me and I, I got a little dizzy and I, I, I rested my head. And when I rest in my head and I, God, I pray that I'm not over exaggerating this. I pray that you use me for this. God was showing me a, a, a place of darkness covered my, covered me right now. Uh, at that, at that moment in time, there was just, I was in the place of darkness and I was scared and it was a place where you could not return. And God was saying, listen, I saved you from this. If you keep doing this, this is where you're going to end up. And I believe that was, that was in my heart. That was in my heart. And I was so scared. I'm like, God, okay, I get it. I won't do this again. So that moment I really seeked after God. So if there's anybody who might be watching, um, it's one thing to say, you know what, God is my, my savior. I'm a Christian, but it's a different, it's a different thing to, to, to actually live the life of Christ. We are called to be followers of Jesus Christ, not to um, to say we're Christians and then go out go out and party. I was I was guilty of that. I was you know I Christ- confess myself as a Christian, and then I you know go out and party. But God is calling us to be followers of Christ, and that's what um, ultimately uh, happened. And again, you, you know when you're when you follow Christ, you're you're gonna see lots of uh, tribulation. Uh, it gets harder as you go, but because the road gets narrow.
Mm. And that's what I, I started realizing with my life, you know, after, you know, going to college, I, I went to college after um, I had that experience. And, you know, many people who go to college don't believe in God and I have teachers who don't believe in God. And it was really hard for me because I was really, I, because I had that experience, I wanted to go all out for God. So it was very difficult for me, but God came through for me and he, he still continues to do that for me. Um, so as I said, you know, um, God's brought me a, a long way. Um, it's not perfect. Um, as I said, I, I, I use my gifts to uh, glorify God with my, my music. And until recently, I know I, I'm now, you'll see me on the streets uh, with a mic uh, and a, a microphone. And I'm just preaching the gospel because, um, you know, once we, we, God calls us, he calls us to go out to preach to the world. You know, there's many lost souls. So um, the fact that God is using me, like, um, is, is astonishing. And that it all comes back to that parable that I was, I, I read to you, um, uh, Mark, uh, 4 30, you see, um, there were seeds that were placed into, in me. And as I was, you know, um, I, 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 Anya was like, um, the, the, she watered, she, there were, there are many people who watered and watering and watering. And Anya was like the final person to water uh, you know, you, you'll see people who uh, sow and people, and then some people will reap. So onion was like the final, like the uh, watered the seed uh, for the final time. And then that's when God came into my life, but it didn't stop there. You know, people, I still have people in my life that are just sowing into me. And now I'm able to do the things that I'm doing now. And now I want to, I want to sow seeds. So when I'm out there evangelizing, I am sowing seeds um, I'm not out there to be, you know, uh, uh, to see people get saved on the spot. It's it's almost it's hard to see that. I, I let I what I do is I, I I sow the seeds and then I allow God to do what He wants with that seed because that's what He did for me. So that is um, a little bit of my testimony. Yeah. Amen. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> My sister just called like, right as you said that. Oh, did she? Did she? Did she? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that, that was good timing, though. Um, that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Thank Amen. you so much. Amen. That's incredible. Amen. Um, I love that story, too. Yeah, which you never told me about um, that moment where you had, yeah, with the drinking and holy cow. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, yeah, because... Yeah, I don't tell a lot of people that story because people will be, you know, most people will say, oh, yeah, you were drinking, so of course, but no, it was a real experience. Yeah. It was, it was very frightening and, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure we've, we've all have gone through our dark moments and I think it's in those dark moments where Christ is saying, listen, I, I can, I can save you from this. This is, this is where you're headed. Yeah. I can save you from this. And that's what Christ did for me. That's what Jesus did for me. So, um, again, if there's anybody who, 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 who's watching, who, who might have these, these dark experiences or who doesn't know who Jesus is, um, I encourage you to contact Anya. She, she'll, she'll take your call. She'll, she'll, she'll listen to you. And yeah. she has her testimony of her own. So, um, yeah, actually, well, I'm actually curious about yours. I've never, I, you never really oh, told me about yours. Uh, I, I will. I'll have to do a separate video. Yeah, yeah def definitely separate. It's a bit of a long one, but I'll share a bit of it because um, I, I'm so glad you shared that little that little moment of darkness for you. How old were you when that happened? Oh gosh, so I'm um, I don't remember. I wish I did, but I must have been uh, 21, maybe. It yeah. happened right before I went back to school. Uh, so 21, 22 yeah. is when that experience happened. It was, yeah, it was, um, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, I do, right. At, when, when I, when I came to, I'm like, I told my friends, yo guys, I gotta go. My friends are looking at me like, where you, you just got here. I'm like, I gotta go. I can't be here. And I left and, and did yeah. you find like that was the moment where things really started to change in your life? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I really, cause like I said, uh, God showed me like, this is where you're going to head, man. You can't, you, you don't want to be on this path. Wow. And like the, 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 the worst feeling is, um, is knowing if you go to this place, mm -hmm. it's justified. 
it's justified knowing that God tried to save you from this thing. Mm -hmm. So it, it, yeah, it was very scary. And the fact that you can't come out of this place, Mm. it's, it's scary. And God doesn't want that for any of his children. So yeah, God says my people perish for lack of, through lack of knowledge. So um, yeah, after that experience, I really, um, I really, really wanted to seek after God. And I, like I said, I'm not perfect. I still, I still fall down. You know, I'm not a holy saint. I, you know, I make mistakes, um, yeah. but um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, yeah, no, I, I was amazed that you shared that because um, it's funny how, it's funny how God does stuff with like people that you're close with in your life or even your spouse or whatever, with the timing of things are just so uncanny. Actually, Adam exactly. and I were just talking about that. Like before doing this video, we were talking about how weird it is that Adam and I never met until um, like, yeah, we didn't, didn't meet for the longest time, but yet he went to the same high school as us, went to the same college. Um, Adam went to All Saints? He went to All Saints, yeah. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, we went to all things. We went to school with him, but never wow. met him. Like we didn't know him. Um, but he he's also like three years older. So he it would have been like the last when we were in grade nine, he was in grade 12. Um I wasn't in grade nine. Yeah. What? I came in grade 10. Oh, when you, you came in, well, yeah. <laughs> when you yeah, so there, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, his brother, we like would have come across probably because he's our age, but um yeah, no, Adam and I were just talking about how weird that is because we went to the same high school, went to the same college. We worked for ages across the street from each other. When I was at Tim Hortons, he was at Reeves Dairy across the street. Um, oh, wow. Like all these little weird things. The weirdest one was that he used to drop his brother, Aaron, off to my house to do music together. Like, oh, Aaron, really? Yeah. Like he would come over and Adam used to drop him off. He never knew me. And this was like years later, we finally met. Um, we were saying when we, we were, we went to Europe the same time, like when he went to like Germany, I was in Italy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, this is totally off topic, but it, we were just talking about how uncanny, uncanny it is when, when there's two people that are like somehow in the spirit in sync, God just does little funny things, um, or allows things to happen at the same time that are so similar. I don't know if it's just to show that he was a part of your life and your connection the whole time and just to confirm what he's doing in your life and that he's there. So when you told that little story, that little testimony, sorry, you guys are going to hear kids screaming in the background. <laughs> um, uh, it, it's interesting because I had a very, very similar experience at the same age as you. And it was my moment of really turning back as well. Um, uh, it really? Yeah. Yeah. And the, there's only a handful of people that have heard, oh, probably only two people, Adam and probably maybe one other friend that have heard this story. And I have it written down because I, you know, would journal all my dreams and journal everything. Um, and it happened. Yeah. The same same age as you because it was right before I had met Adam and um but mine wasn't about like drinking and drugs thank the lord I never really got into that heavily like probably just Mm. as much as you but it wasn't something that I continued like I was able Mm -hmm. to get out of that um no no no, what's that what do you need okay just go just sniffing (laughs) um but mine had to do with sexual impurity and so like you know me and in high school and yeah can you lock the door and close it so baby doesn't come so. i'm sorry baby oh, and so yeah you know like throughout high school how much i struggled with that and relationships and my identity and just um trying to find love through my relationships with men right mm-hmm. um I don't know if Adam knows that he's out there crying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Hang on a second. Okay. They may come here. Jesus is Lord. You can see how you get on the trail and then we'll Say hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, you're going oh, to... Look at that smile. There you go. Wait, okay. one second. Sorry, I'm ruining this meeting. Adam, can you grab the baby, please? I can't wait till I become a parent. Oh man, I'm going to be such a good dad. So yeah, guys, um, uh, Jesus loves you. Um, he died for your sins. 
Uh, on the third day, he rose again uh, to, and he conquered death. So if you don't have that relationship with him, um, uh, I, I encourage you to, uh, to really seek after the Lord and he will, uh, he will reveal himself to you. Um, um, if you, you, you have questions, you can email me, um, team Malcolm 89 at hotmail.com. So T M A L C O L M 89 at hotmail.com. And Anya is back. Thanks. Thanks for filling in there. No problem. <laughs> um, okay. What was I saying? Oh yeah. So talking about high school and, um, yeah, and my relationships and my issue with that. And so once I started at, yeah, probably the same time, just kind of, you know, I had the seeds planted. I was going to church with my current boyfriend and there were a lot of seeds planted in my heart. And, um, I knew like I, I had come from a really dark place when I was like really into witchcraft and a bunch of other religions and stuff. And, but like you, it's like, you always knew something that was there. You're always seeking after that that higher, that higher calling, higher power, higher spirituality. There's always something there. Um, yeah. And I might have to just bring the baby in. We'll see. Um, and so I was kind of on that path to where I was being called and I was seeking and I was reading the word as much as physically possible, just because I knew, I was reading the King James Bible. I didn't understand anything I was reading, but I was, I was desperate to find the truth, find God. And I really believed that he was there. I just needed to, needed to know more. Mm -hmm. And that's when things started to shift and started to change. And I was in a relationship at the time. Um, and it was not obviously not a good godly relationship. And what happened to me was one night I had a very intense dream um, from the Lord. And it was one of, the, one of the most impacting, traumatic, I would say, dreams that I've ever had, where it's like, it's undeniable that it wasn't something that I just made up out of my head that just came into my head. And in my dream, um, it was about relationships and, uh, and I, and I was asking the Lord in my dream, who am I going to be with? Who am I going to marry? Um, when is this going to happen? Because I'm in and out of relationships, you know, for my entire life since I was in, you know, late elementary school or grade nine, which is ridiculous. You're a child, like looking back, it's so heartbreaking, but, um, right. yeah. And so, and so I had this dream and I was asking and I was walking down the aisle to go get married, but no one's standing there at the end of the aisle. And mm. I asked Lord, what is going on? And in my dream, um, there was a big stained glass window and it was a stained glass picture of the Virgin Mary. And um, now I don't, uh, I grew up um, Catholic, even though like I didn't have the faith or whatever, right? I don't believe in worshiping Mary, nothing like that. But I believe in this dream that God used this image of Mary. And when I asked the Lord, who am I going to marry? She winks at me in the dream. And automatically I had this revelation, this understanding that my husband's coming. Um, and the Lord continued after that dream and through, you know, it was only probably a year or two or just a year until I finally met Adam, my husband. Um, but I knew from that time that it was God saying, let go, um, stop this whole mess of relationships and let me bring your husband. And, but the biggest part of that dream, which is really similar to what you experienced is that after that whole wedding thing or whatever I was outside walking and it was really dark outside and I believe that I was walking um with an angel of sorts it wasn't God I don't believe it was Jesus I don't believe it was demonic but I believe it was some sort of messenger like something and this being took my hand and started running with me and we started running into darkness, like pitch black darkness. And it, I don't even know where it was going. I don't know if it was going down. I don't know if it was going, it was going somewhere, but it wasn't good. And I just remember it feeling so dark and so bleak. And it was grabbing my hand and running and saying, change your ways, change your ways, change your ways. And said it three times as clear as day. And I knew what it meant. I knew I had to stop my immorality and I knew I had to stop this idolatry and I had to turn wholeheartedly to God. Um, 
Now at the moment, it's like, I knew that I had that understanding, but I didn't have the full revelation. So when I came out of that dream, I wrote it down because it was so impactful, but I still lived my life of sin. Mm -hmm. But the biggest difference now was that when I was in my relationship with my boyfriend um, and when I was sexually immoral and all that, I was so heavily convicted, so convicted that my spirit couldn't act out in any sort of perversion at all I couldn't like I couldn't mentally I actually wanted to I wanted to continue to live this relationship and live this life of sin I didn't under I could not understand it even like if I could talk to my ex-boyfriend right now which I would probably never do unless it was a god you know driven thing um it would probably be the most incredible conversation because it was it was it 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 made no sense nobody really knew what we were going through um but he would tell you the same thing he'd be like mentally it didn't make sense to me i wanted to have this intimate relationship with him but in my spirit it would not let me i would cry i would be in tears every time you know we'd get close at all could not do it and it actually ended our relationship he broke up with me because you know we couldn't be physical and Mm -hmm. i was just like there's nothing i can do about it i had to let go and that's when that's when things the ball really got rolling with my relationship with the lord because i let go i couldn't have a relationship with another guy i couldn't that was it it and i think it was like a year or something first break in my life where i didn't have a relationship with somebody and then my husband came um and it was it god kept his promise he kept his promise that if i let go and i changed my ways that that's what was going to happen and it did um Mm -hmm. and that yeah that was a serious wake-up call and it really showed me that if you do not change your ways especially if you're starting to seek after the lord exactly um, yeah yeah, things can things can go downhill they can go down fasting that's not what god has for you that's not what he wants for you it's so easy Mm -hmm. to live a life of um, sin, missing the mark with God. But the moment that you're starting to show God, you know, I want to know you more. I want to surrender more Then he's going to show you. And he's going to, he's going to honor that. He's going to come back at you and, and show you the way that he intends for you to live and live in freedom because with the way yeah. that you're acting, actually, I think this was something that Francis, I love Francis Chan said once, and that really woke me up, but he was talking about sin and living, missing the mark with God and just living a life that's contrary to what God has for you. It's like those things that you love so much, though, the, those actions that you're, you're, you're um, acting out and they're contrary to God that are, it's living a life of sin or darkness or away from the light. Those are all actions that are going to destroy you in the end anyway. That God mm-hmm. wanted to call you out from that because you don't even realize that it's stuff that's going to destroy you until he wakes you up to it. it has to be God's revelation. It has to be his Holy Spirit showing you. And that's how he did it for me was through mm-hmm. that dream. Um, and then I, and then, yeah, I just really reflecting back on it. I really saw he was saving me from destruction. That was going to destroy me physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And then once I made that decision to step out of that and really follow with that conviction, that Holy spirit conviction, that wasn't out of my own power and nothing to do with me. Cause I wanted the opposite. My flesh, yeah, my course. mind totally of wanted course. the opposite, totally contrary to God, but that's yeah. Holy spirit inside of me that I invited him that I wanted him to live in me he said you can't be doing this you got to stop and it doesn't mean that I didn't slip and make mistakes even with my husband but we were still determined and by God's grace he like a child you see them fall down right and make mistakes but if you're still willing to learn and keep going God sees the end goal he sees where you're heading he sees that he's going to get you to perfection at some point and he lifts Mm -hmm. you up and just keeps you going but yeah, like you said, that that moment where God really shows you, whether it's through a dream, whether it's through a vision, um, however, he, whether it's just through revelation and guys, just that little inkling, just that little feeling you have in you that you're doing something that you shouldn't, that you're not on the right track. And God will give that to you, even if you don't know him, even if you don't have the Holy Spirit living in you. Like I went my whole life hearing the voice of God 
not even recognizing that it's the voice of God because I didn't know God. He gives you a conscience also because we are children yes. of God, right? We are, mm -hmm. that is what we are. We are children of God first and foremost that have fallen away. Naturally, we are inclined um, to, yeah, to live a certain way and that's to live by the glory of God and filled with his spirit. So that conscience that you have, those little feelings, those little messages, those little voices that you think your own voice most often is not. It's, well, it isn't, it isn't your own voice. You're either hearing two ends, you're either hearing the voice of God or you're hearing the voice of the enemy. Um, there's no real neutral middle ground. It's either good or it's off track. So if you have those feelings, if you have those convictions, follow them and honor them, or at least try and pay attention to them and take them to the creator and be like, God, is this you? Is this you trying to tell me something that something's not right? Or because something feels off in my gut, something feels off in my spirit, or I even had this thought or someone told me that this isn't right. Is that the truth? Am I living contrary to how you want me to live? And you know what, Trey, if you don't believe that it's going to get you into a better place, at least try it out. Just test it because what what what's it going to hurt if you if you stop drinking for a period of time and ask the Lord to change your heart? What's it going to hurt? You know what? It's not going to do any harm. If you stop having sex before marriage for a little period of time just to ask the Lord and see, like, is this is this something I shouldn't be doing? It's not going to hurt. It's not going to do any damage just to try it out. God's not afraid to be tested you know you don't test the lord but mm -hmm. try him and see that he is good not test the lord but try him see that he is good and it's not like he's like a person on the side that you try out like i'm just gonna try god but he'll use people that have that mentality he'll use the people like that that was me like is god real i feel like like i don't know if you think the same way Terrell, but majority of the people that I know that have a genuine relationship with God and really wholeheartedly are sold out to him and know him started in the place of just wanting to know, is he real? Like, and asking yeah. him, God, the, are, if you're real, show me. God's not afraid to be asked that. He wants that. He wants that. He's not afraid. He's not like, if you have to ask me that, then I'm not going to show you. Like, you know, you're yeah, kid, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kid try him out like just be open and willing and be like if you're the lord show me convict me guide me and and then you know that conviction that feeling that realization that god is god that's where the repentance comes in and that's when the repentance starts and you know it's all by his power it's not by us it's his conviction his light bulb his spirit right yeah yeah so, so it's it. so it's mm -hmm. It's so it's so true. Uh, just adding to what you said, um, you know, the Bible says we all know there's a God, but what we do is we suppress it. We suppress mm -hmm. it. And that's that's something I did for the longest time. I knew there was God, but I suppressed it. And like Anya said, if you seek after him, he will reveal yourself to you. I promise you that he will reveal himself to you. You know, it, 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 it's it's hard because it doesn't help that the world clouds many people the cloud the, the world says you know no follow go this way no go this way no come this way and jesus is saying listen i am the way the life and the truth no but no man comes to the father by me so he will reveal himself to you but you have to it just it does take it, it it requires you to really seek after him and it 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 it, it is hard i i will say this it's it's hard especially when you're you're so used to those um, your those lust desires those desires that you're so used to um but he helps you with that when he sends his spirit when you when you call in his name he'll send this his spirit mm -hmm. and he changes that heart slowly but it it, it 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 he does change you from the inside out and he why he does it is because he he loves you and he wants you he wants a relationship with you and it's for your own good mm -hmm. you know if you think about it you know a lot of things that we do sex for before marriage you know that destroys relationships so god's not just saying don't do this because i command you not to do it he's saying that he's saying don't do certain things because certain things have consequences Amen. and certain things hurt yourself you might not see it but it hurts you and that's what god that's why god is calling us to repentance and god is saying listen just don't 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 live the lifestyle you want to live follow me because I, I can give you life. I can give you rest. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm just adding to what you said, Anya. You, that was that was great. That was great. No, thank yeah. you. Yeah, amen. You're spot on. God is so good. God is so good. Glory yeah. to God. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, yeah. So when you just shared that little story, I just had to line up my story with that too because the timing is just an, uncanny. And uh, and if, if anybody out there has, has had a similar experience or similar story, please share below, share in the comments, let us know, because this is meant to be an encouragement to those who maybe feel alone in their walk or have had those experiences, don't know really what to make of them. A lot of us don't talk about this stuff. Um, I mean, I I feel like we do, but we don't enough. I feel like as believers, we don't talk about the nitty gritty stuff. We feel nervous or um, embarrassed about certain things and certain topics. But um, when the time comes, God says, shout it from the rooftop, you know, share, share your testimony, share my story, because we all go through the same thing. Every single one of us go through the same experiences as human beings um so yeah comment below with any any questions any stories any testimonies um even any videos that you want me to be posting maybe with questions that you might have i will be um posting these interviews as often as i can whenever they come in um to give you guys encouragement different perspectives from other people Um, But I will also be posting videos with uh, my husband, Adam, um, just discussing topics, uh, whatever the Lord lays on our heart. Um, So if you guys have any questions, anything, nothing's off topic, please post questions below. It'll know, it'll let us know what you guys want to hear, what you guys want to know about, and we'll seek Lord after it and have a good discussion with you guys. Um, Terrell, is there anything that you feel you want to wrap up with or share um i think everything i I've, I've already said uh, is what i wanted to share I, I just again um um jesus is the best thing for you man if, you, if, you, if you're watching this and i encourage you to just really seek after him he, he he will he will do what he promised and um again um we're you know me me and anya we've we've gone to many similar things i know a lot of people don't like, as she said, a lot of people don't want to talk about. There's things I'm still uh, uncomfortable to talk about, but I, uh, but um, uh, the more we do this, I will, I will open up to certain things. There's a lot of things that guys don't want to talk about, but. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, well, but, I'll have uh, Adam on here with you at some point. Yes, yes. You guys can have a man, a man fun. Exactly. Share awesome. That the guys. All right. So yes. that's all. That's everything I wanted to okay. say. Okay. Thank you. God bless you, Terrell. We love you. Thank you so much for being on here with me. And um, we'll see you on here again and hopefully in person <laughs> sometime. Yes, yes, yes. God bless you, Anya. And thank you for uh, having me on this 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 show. Yeah, thank so, you. All right. Take care, all right. guys. God bless everyone. We will see you soon. All right. Okay. Bye.